works just as well to show that there is nothing inside your gun and that the action is completely empty and unloaded. <laughs> you can't, you can't get a magazine in there and that firing pin is not going to strike anything That's in the true. chamber. And it's plastic, so it's not going to damage the internals of your firearm in any way, shape, or form that would harm it. So, right. so now I, <laughs> peace of mind, and I won't be checking this every couple minutes. Oh, right, well, Maggie, gosh, it's great to see you again. Well, hi, Mark. It's great to be back here. And it's <laughs> Absolutely. I love being here at the range, by the way. This is one of my favorite places to be. Because it's air-conditioned yeah. and cold. <laughs> yes, it's been so hot. I've had rain lately. Oh, thank God for it. Oh, thank God. I just, yeah. I stood outside like this for about I a minute. It smelled so good. Yeah, it did. We needed it's, the rain. I, I love it. I felt the rain, and I think it's been about at least a month since I felt the rain. I was, I was yeah. only a little bit mad <laughs> that the temperature dropped so much. I'm like, it's not October. This is July. This I was is so August. happy. I was so happy. Oh. Hey, uh, we were talking about um, shooting styles and kind of where we established our, our skill set, so to say. Yes. Our amateur skill set. Yes, very amateur. Um, but there's a couple things that I know uh, you've been working, that you're very good at, um, that I want to talk about. And it's something, uh, specifically uh, one that I've been working on, uh, which is shooting with both eyes open. That is an amazing compliment. Thank you. Because <laughs> I am still working on that myself. Well, when I edit the videos, you just have, you know, you just got your both eyes open and that's it. Uh, so it seems like you're locked on pretty well. Whereas in... What I have to do still is I can see it with both eyes open, but every now and then it gets all jumbled in there. So I have to squint just a little bit. And then once I get it, I can open by, uh, both eyes again. So I wanted to just ask kind of how you got that skill. What would you recommend to people? Um, and I have a couple tips too, cause it's just something I've been working on as well. So uh, what do you think? It is a lot of practice. You have muscles in your eyes and you are training them um, to focus on two points, one at a very close distance and one at a further distance. Mm -hmm. You do this every day when you drive. Your brain does not That's even think point. about it. You know what's on your dashboard, what your rate of speed is. Heck, you're probably even proficient enough to sit there and text while you drive. Don't, don't do drive. that. Okay, you're ahead. not that idiot. Please <laughs> don't. Don't text and drive. Good call. Just because you can does not mean you, you should. should. So Amen to that. don't text and drive. <laughs> but you can focus on multiple things. Mm -hmm. You can see the speed that you're going. You can change the radio all right here in front of you while you are looking down the road miles ahead at the patterns of traffic, at the lights, at what people in other lanes or oncoming traffic might be doing. You're taking it all in and you're doing it with both mm -hmm. eyes open. Now, do you, because for me, uh, I, you know, it's the dominant eye that I'm, that I'm aiming with and my other eye is messing it up. Does that make sense? It does. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you get it to where you could just kind of blur out the non-dominant eye? Not necessarily blur it out, but just ignore, your brain almost has to ignore it. You have to ignore it. Yeah, which is why I have to kind of squint to get yeah. it, like, because I'll, it's, I just, every now and then I'll, I'll be fine and then I'll lose it and I gotta squint and then I'll get it back. It's so much easier. May I? Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, I like the pen you put in there to make sure it's safe. <laughs> I know, right? So so I'm I'm going to take this pen out of there actually. It's a nice safety flag you got there. Could you yeah, yeah, assist? Yeah. Yeah, Thank absolutely. you. All right. All right, now so um, you want to pick a point at a distance. If you have a light switch plate on the wall, nice. the tiny so or an outlet mm -hmm. on the wall that you can visually see, there are little screws that mm -hmm. hold that plate in place. Aim for the screws. Nice, Aim I small, like that idea. I, and small. I've done that before, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want something super, super, super tiny. Now we're talking about after you've cleared. Yes, af after you have made sure that your gun is clear. cleared and checked multiple times and, and you don't clear and check it. And like, you know what's beyond that wall. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. You, have, you, you have to know what is. All your safety checks in place, oh, with please. that being said. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> maybe, maybe unfortunately, we I feel like I got to throw that in. No, no, no. They no, know what this, this, is. this is totally correct. You do need to go over this. You do need okay. to make sure that your firearm is entirely empty and unloaded. You do need to know exactly what you are aiming at 
and whether or not you would be comfortable destroying that in case the worst happens and there is a bullet in the chamber. So don't aim at anything, don't practice aiming at anything that you value nearly and dearly. And know it's beyond it. Yes. Yeah. So with that being said, pick your point of aim in the distance and you will want your sights to line up. Um, the first thing you, that I like to do is I like to make sure that my sights are even. You'll probably see my eyes sometimes cross or look really weird because I'm focusing on a distance here, a distance here, and a distance right. there. Now, where do you put your, like if you, because you can't focus all those things. No. So where do you put your focus on? So, I've been told the front plate. I have been told the front. But I don't know if that's accurate. I have that's been, just been what I've told. I have been told that if you can't acquire that front sight to at least check the rear or check all your sights up close to make sure that you are still holding the gun steady and you're holding it on before then you focus beyond those sights and blur them out entirely like they don't even exist and all you're looking at is the target that you are ready to destroy. Interesting. My, my, Please. Because um, <clears throat> for me, I'll trade you our safety flag there. So for me, um, what I have to do is like now, I, I've acquired it right away because I, I picked a point on the wall. I love that. That's, yeah. that's why. You, you like pick that. your point. Yeah. Uh, so and I acquired it right away. But if I lose it, I have to kind of squint that eye. And then it gets right back and then I can open it back up. But it seems like my focus is really just almost accidental is on the target itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if um, you can get it now, and it does take practice because you are training muscles that don't normally focus on such close distances and such a tiny far distance. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that people that have had to wear eye patches and then no longer have oh, to wear gosh. eye patches and have vision again in both eyes will totally understand <laughs> um, because you do lose so much depth perception when you close that one eye. And suddenly what looks straight with one eye is no longer straight and dead on when you open both eyes. And it's difficult to do because your dominant eye has stronger muscles mm -hmm. than your weak eye. So Makes it's sense. training yeah. your non-dominant muscles to strengthen and get better. And <clears throat> people that have had replacement joints or surgeries to replace parts in them will understand how <laughs> when you don't use something for long and you have to rebuild all those mm -hmm. muscles, it takes it's practice tough. and it yeah, takes time. <laughs> so, so give yourself the time that you need and a place where you're comfortable to practice this. That is very important. It is. And, and something that I've always noticed too, is like a lot of times I'll practice uh, dry firing or, or just in a safe place. But then when I get in the range and I'll put on safety goggles, sometimes that'll start to throw me off a little bit too, especially if they're fogging up or they're not clear. Like it'll just throw my eyes way off. Does that it something? Because you wear glasses. I, so I that's, do. So, so you're probably kind of used to it. I, I am kind of used to it. And it does. It warps and distorts your vision on the side, especially if you have very strong corrective lenses. Or for people that have different levels of vision and need bifocals or even trifocals, this is incredibly difficult. It's not that impossible. Is. It is not impossible. It is a skill that you have that you can improve upon and that I know you can do because there are people out there that do this, mm -hmm. that have taught me how to do this and my vision isn't nearly as bad as theirs is bad. Don't worry, <laughs> but it's not nearly that not bad. bad. So I, there's hope for us. Mm -hmm. And even as your vision changes and ages and gets worse or maybe gets better, you know, just practice. Because my vision, I do wear glasses, but uh, it's for long distances. Mm -hmm. um, so if I do long distance shooting, I will put on glasses. But that's about it. I've also, also found the more I wear glasses, the worse my eyesight. So I just, I only wear them if I need them. Yeah, I, 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 I wear too. mine when I'm 
wear I, well when I'm not wearing a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> or safety goggles. Yeah, yeah, safety is so yeah, the, the helmet on the motorcycle mm -hmm. takes the, the place, so I usually wear the uh, fake eyeballs in that case, but everything else it's glasses. Now you'll notice um, when you get into shooting if you get into shooting competitively or if you go to the range enough, you will notice people with shooting glasses that are practicing with tape over an eye. Have, have you ever, why, I have seen that. Have now, you seen why that? do they do that? What is that? So usually it's just like a tiny little dot or a sticker that they'll put on there or it's something that slightly covers the eyes but is perforated in such a fashion it's making your eye work a little harder, I think. So it's almost like my version of squinting without squinting? Yep. Okay. So I can you see can that. keep both eyes open, but you've still got your non dominant eye working to try and get you better, get you on target. Now, now someone that is qualified in optometry can tell you more on this subject than I have <laughs> no expertise on that whatsoever. No. Um, I do know that that is a thing. I do know that um, by practicing that way, it does help some people improve. So maybe if that's a tip that works for you, a small little, uh, you don't want to take out the whole lens. You just want to put just right in front a of cover you. right in front of your eyeball. Because I haven't seen that, and I, I wasn't really sure what that was. I assumed it had something to do with it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's so they can keep both eyes open and still get that focus and target acquisition, but they don't blur the target as much, maybe, right. um, as they're shooting. I would say, you know, any insight on that, on just shooting, you know, definitely put that in the comments below because what we're talking about is, again, it's just our... Yeah, this is... This, this is, is just Mark and I saying, well, here's what I do that works. And, and, I've, and I've actually, you know, I've had guys at the range hand me a sticker and go, here, put this over your eyeball, girly, it'll strengthen your eye. And I'm like, okay, which one, you know, and I'll put it out, you know. <laughs> you got like both covered. <laughs> is what I'm supposed to do? Hi! <laughs> I probably would do something like that just for fun and giggles. <laughs> and they go, I can see you doing and this. They right. go, <laughs> they'd look at you. Who oh, let this being bad on the range? <laughs> but you laugh. That's right. Well, Maggie, gosh, thank you so much. Because uh, for me, it's really just practice, practice, practice. It really Keep is. practicing. And it is mm -hmm. practice. And practice gets easier with time. It is not easy to start with. Think of anything you've done for the first time in your life. You're not great at it. No. The more never. you practice, the better and the easier it gets. Kids practice walking. You ever seen a kid take its first steps? It's a good thing. Pretty brutal. Good thing that they're <laughs> elastic. That's right. So, That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, gosh, Maggie, thank you so much. We'll keep talking. We'll talk about shooting left hand next. Okay. Uh, All right. right. Let's, Let's go. Let's do it.